<laughs> good afternoon, everybody. Good morning, whatever. Good morning here at Tokyo Time. As everybody knows, it's a bit of a special stream today. You know, uh, we're going to try something interesting. You've seen me carve little bits here and there. You've seen me print little bits here and there. But today we're going to put it all together in one stream. Uh, the image, we talked about this uh, coming up. The image is going to be... Oh, I'm sorry. I, I get the video, of course. Excuse me. The image is going to be the famous little Meiji era design that many uh, would-be printmakers have used as their test piece. I'm going to switch this over now so that you can see the bench. There's the print design. And I'm going to be quiet for a bit while I just get going. Okay. I asked how fast, or have you done it this fast? Mm -hmm. They're asking. But rather, will Cameron do it without snoozing? <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be falling asleep. <laughs> For those who've never seen these before, the, the tracing, what I've done, it's the normal thin gumpy paper sprayed onto just a normal white copy paper. And I didn't trace this out myself again. I just took a photo, you know, photocopy of the original. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to redraw this. A couple of the Twitch people actually prepared a version of this. They set it up in Illustrator with a vectored files, or whatever, but they've traced this to do this. And I don't want to look at somebody else's tracing. I want to use the actual original lines of the original print. So that's what I'll be using here today. These are the registration hmm. marks, of course, going in here. On the Twitch stream, uh, no, on the Twitch page or the fan page, there's lots of people doing their own printmaking now, and lots and lots of comments coming back and forth about different things. And a lot of people seem to be having a bit of trouble with this part of it, pasting mm. down the design. What kind of glue to use, how hard to rub, and this and that, and this and that. And uh, well, for me, it's been important that uh, make the wood wet first. If you start with dry wood, then when you put the glue on, it soaks right into the wood really quickly. And you don't get much contact with your with your tracing. Then a light, I use light glue, and I'm moistening this. I'm spitting on my fingers to make this a bit wetter. If we use wood glue at full strength, it's too strong. Mm. It leaves a covering on the wood, and then when you start to print later on, it's it blocks moisture absorption. Yes. Are you going to carve the postage stamps as well? No, 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 no. A hundred times no, a thousand times no. So I've got to make something up. I mean, the postage stamp covers up actually a few of the lines of the original oh, printing. Right. So we'll have to, I uh, know, what's the word? Ad lib, fly by you, uh, fly, fly by whatever. Yeah. And this is another part, the, the guys on the on the fan page who've been trying this by themselves. This is a tricky part. Rubbing off the back of the gumpy paper. Rub just that little bit too much and whoops, your history, it's gone, you know. Mm -hmm. so. And as they were saying that the guys who've been trying this, there's no ex there's nothing except experience, you know, the only thing. You have to go through here we can pull it off. Look at this. It's coming off yeah. pretty well. Alright, I think we're just about ready here. Good. Okay, anyway, we're ready to carve, but we're not because I have to sharpen up. My knife is broken from yesterday's rough carving. Is 
Is it okay to ask questions during sure, this? Sure, sure. Okay. All right. Good. Westwind77. This stream and the fan page, they're really giving me the itch to start carving for myself. Then do it! Do Good it! Good grief. <laughs> what can I say, you know? That's the idea. Do it. It's fun, you know, actually. I'm still having fun after 99 years doing this. <laughs> Said I should be taking notes. Well, you'll be able to rewatch the video anytime once you get it up. All right, I think we're close. If I make it too sharp, it'll just it'll just break straight away. I'll spend all morning sharpening instead of carving. Hmm. Well, I've got, should I pop it up here? I've got the actual, uh, for people that you know, are new here, who don't know what, we're, what it is we're going to be doing today, is the... Uh, what brand are these diamond stones? What does that I don't mean? know, I'm sorry, I have no idea. They're, they're not s special, they're nothing to do with woodblock printmaking, they're just... Just sharpening Sharpening stones. stones. Diamond plates. It's probably called diamond rat or something. I'm sorry, yeah. I really don't know. Okay. I use a, I use a four hundred and a one thousand. Okay. And I know people tell me you don't need to use them with water, but it just feels so nice to me to to have it that way. So. Now what I'll do? We had trouble with the focusing here, so what I'm going to do, even though there's not so super fine lines on here, I'm going to put my scope in the path here. And what that does is it, it'll, it'll help me see things too, but what it will do really is it uh, puts the focus in one place. In other words, that's where I'm going to start carving. So I can zoom in up to the point where we lose focus. Does that look pretty good? It's looking sharp to me. Looking sharp? Okay, let's start this thing. Where should I start? Let's go. Here we go. Knife to wood. And these lines are not super delicate, delicate, and uh, smooth calligraphy lines. They're quite rough and wiggly. And this is why I didn't want to use the Illustrator file that somebody prepared, because it was all smoothed out. I don't want it smoothed out. I want as much as possible to catch the taste of the original here. Mm. So apologies to whoever it was that prepared that for me, but... Uh, no. There, this corner, it's all wiggly, wiggly, wiggly. What we're going to do is we're going to keep the direction the same. What's the time, sir? Just so we know when we're here actually starting carving. It's 8.19. All right. Maybe you should have done all that preparation, the sharpening before we started, maybe. Who knows? Might regret that later. We'll see. It doesn't matter. It's part of the process. Okay. We've got a question about wet stones. Yeah. Mm, but as in W H E T stones, yes. yes yeah. so, so. And the I know just a minute ago you said you aren't sure which brand, so Here's his question, though. It says, which mine is Dave Stone? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> people, we talked this before. People do do that. I don't know. Actually, not so much anymore. The, yeah. the, the guy who helped me a little bit, Ito Sam, hmm. he was working at that level, you know. And he had a bunch of different stones in his toolkit. And depending on the... Oh, here we are. Another, we've got to come through it. And depending on the kind of steel, he would, as he got a, a new knife from the, you know, the, the guy who made knife blades, he would try out sharpening the knife on different stones from different mountains, literally. Wow. No, there's no way I'm working at that level. Just, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not. I don't have that experience. Yeah. We're talking about a guy who'd been doing this for 50, 60 years in a real severe traditional situation, you know, mm. working with tools that had some consistency. You know, we now, our tools have no consistency. The paper I get, the wood I get, the knives I get are just, they differ from batch to batch mm. so much. P. 
people have noticed the name Sasaragi Studios um, used on the YouTube channel. Is that the name of your old studio or another That's, name? Yes, when Mokohankai? I moved to the house in Ome, I used to live in an apartment in another town in Japan for about 15 years, the first 15 years I was here. And just about the year 2000, I got a chance to buy, buy a house which had a big, huge space in the basement. It was a four, four story building. And the bottom two stories were, you know, workshop space. And I had a chance to buy this place. I know he was desperate to sell it. I had money at the same time, just having finished the 100 Poet Series. Right. So I bought it. And it abuts on a river. There's a river right in the back. There's no backyard. There's the river. I look out my window and, and uh, see the fish swimming down the bottom. Hmm. And in, J in Japan, the word sesedagi is, uh, I don't think it has a direct translation in England. English. It means the sound of shallow water running over rippling stones or whatever. It's yeah, just that it's I like related to mountain streams. Yeah, some, there, so, just, so. And that was that little that's... river behind me was perfect. So I just called my room the Sesaragi Studio. It was before this Mokohankan venture, you know, getting working with other people mm -hmm. and stuff before that started at all. So when I set up the YouTube channel, it seemed sensible to use Sesaragi Studio as the name of the, of the YouTube channel. Okay. Hmm. God. Let's see. <clears throat> Where is it? Dave, do you feel woodblock printmaking bridges a gap between artistry and craftsmanship? What are your thoughts on artistry, craftsmanship? Well, the way I look at it, and the way probably many people out in the world look at it, is kind of different. You know, the world looks on Japanese printmaking as one of the extreme artistic creations of all mankind, you know, these, these, this tradition of Japanese prints, the Utamaro, Hokusai, Hiroshi mm -hmm. stuff. You know. But from here on the ground, those of us who make them, it's not even art. This is the printing business, you know. In the old days, it was literally, that was the printing business. There were no presses and, and stuff like that. And cutting things onto wood and making them like this was the only way to reproduce imagery. Mm. So it wasn't art, it was absolutely the printing business. And myself, being not an artist in the draw original stuff on sheets of paper sense, you know, I don't draw, I don't, I don't do that kind of art. Right. So for me, absolutely, it's the manufacture that is, it's why I'm here. I like making stuff. I'm a geek, a control freak, whatever negative or positive words these are. You know. I just like mucking around with this stuff. And it was perfect for me because not having ever trained myself to draw things, you know, in the sense that someone like Jed has, who's spent all his life drawing and sketching and things like that. Mm -hmm. So for me, the, the manufacturing aspect of this is what's interesting. So the thing itself can be analyzed both ways. We are making obviously clearly a piece of art here today, which people will look at as being capital A R T. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'm not really interested in that at all. You know. I'm the guy who is, you know, translating that person's original conception, this sketch of a woman in the water, which is the art part. I'm the guy who is simply, you know, putting all the pieces together, the engineer who makes the physical thing happen. Mm. Great. Okay, do you see what I've done here? I've cut all those horizontal lines, the one face of them. I had the block just, instead of rotating the block, I cut one side, one side, one side, one side of all the horizontal ripple lines. I'm not going to turn around and work my way back down. Hmm. I'm saving the woman for a bit later. How do you know how deep into the wood to cut? What is the Goldilocks zone? Where's where it's the perfect depth? Because I know we've talked about sometimes being too shallow, sometimes being yeah, too deep. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the ones I'm cutting right now, they're just V-cuts, obviously. We, yeah. you know, once I get into an open area, the rule is simple. The wider the space, the deeper you go within you know, the limits of what you're doing. Right. Max we'd carve, I would carve as three or four millimeters max anywhere. Mm. These ones are just, you can see it's a V-cut going in. It's probably half a millimeter down, I don't know. And again, this is a question that it, it, it depends. There's no single answer because uh, we got this upstairs. John Sam brought those blocks for uh, a Sugasan to carve, you know, a Sugasan to print. Mm -hmm. And she's complaining bitterly mm -hmm. that they're too shallow. And he said, I tested them, they're okay. And he tested them with a piece of copy paper with a flat, smooth <laughs> surface and no barren pressure and doing just one or two copies. Right. And she's doing it now, real printing, using much more pressure. She's using a softer paper, which pushes down farther. Right. And she's doing like 100 copies. So it's go, 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 go. Pigment builds up. So what he thought was fine for him, just as a single test, she's complaining bitterly because it's hmm. blotching all over the place. 
So there's no single answer. It's the Abraham Lincoln thing, you know? How long should a man's legs be? <laughs> long enough to reach the ground. <laughs> <laughs> How many different knives do you use normally? One. Next question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that was easy. Um, no, no, I've got to qualify that. Don't I? If, if, uh, actually, let me back up a bit. Don't I? This stream so far, that our channel has been about me. This is Dave Bull, you know, with his little Twitch stream channel. Mm -hmm. There's been requests, and this is also a request from me, that I would like to go and visit some other workers like we go and visit ask us on the carver right get a, get a, get his clearance first put the camera up and we'll run the camera and just we'll do a stream watching him carve and if he's cool for it asking him questions while he carves he may not be cool for that but whatever anyway, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter we watch him carve and i can narrate and talk about what we're seeing yeah and then we would see a totally different thing you know that's a real quote real unquote carver yeah. hmm. in the sense of you know trained in a japanese workshop and stuff right. like that and we could look at his tools and talk about that. And he, if you asked him, how many knives do you have? He would probably say, I, I keep three close at hand here. And what he's done is he's got, I'm guessing three. He's got three of these knives, the same one that I'm using here. But he's got them sharpened at slightly different angles. A bit more acute, a bit medium, and a bit flatter. Yeah. And if he's going around lots of fine little circles and stuff, he'll use his more acute one. If he's doing something that's a whole bunch of straight lines, he'll use the one that's more obtuse right. so that it stays. Hmm. And me, I'm just whatever. I, I have a phobia about having too many tools, and I keep it minimum. And if I'm going to do a job that's carving a whole bunch of straight lines, I will sharpen this suitable for that. Okay. And if I'm going around a bunch of small circles, I'll sharpen it suitable for that. But that's, you know, a bit wasteful. Hmm. So the knife angle is important as far as the type of job that's at hand. And then if the question was a bit wider, how many tools do you have? So he would have pretty much the same as me. He's got like then one or two or three of the cutting knives. Then he will have two or three of the big clearing chisels that knocks out waste wood. Right. And then we've got five or six or seven of the ice key chisels, the ones that take out the the waste wood at the very end, which you, you'll see me when I get there okay. uh, later on in this process. Are all the tools handmade, or do you buy regular chisels, modify them, or knives, or other things? It's the, the, the bigger stuff I use, the ones you'll see in a few minutes when I'm whapping out the stuff, they're just normal woodworker's chisels. There's not, they're nothing to do with, with the printmaking environment hmm. at all. The cutting knife you saw me use for the past half hour or so is made for woodblock printmakers. I don't buy it as a finished tool. We buy the blades. Okay. And we've got our own handle. You make your own handle. In fact, the one I'm using right now, too, I've made the handle... And the blade part of this is a sewing machine needle. This isn't an official authorized Edo era <laughs> official tool. I don't, somebody somewhere along the line came up with the idea of, of using that sewing machine needle and we did it. Hmm. This one now, this is an actual blade made by a by a you know a metal worker. And we're okay with this. We complain about tools and stuff all the time over here. The paper's no good, the wood's no good, you know, blah blah blah. But in the case of the cutting tools, we're okay. And it's because, you know, there's all different kinds of crafts. As we said, you know, making a shrine carpentry or just normal woodwork. Everybody needs good blades. So there are lots and lots of, of what do they call it? Harmonious. What do you call it? Yeah, hardware. Uh, metal workers? No. Uh, me metal blacksmith? Is that the word? I don't know. It People could who be. Make, make knife blades and stuff. What, what's yeah. the English word for them now? There's lots of such people yeah. all over the country. Hmm. So it's, this is not a dying, dying art or craft at all, you know. And I've read, like, the guys who, carpenters, they complain, oh, my God, the planes are no good compared to what they were in the old days, and blah, blah, blah. We're all saying the same thing. Yeah. But getting getting a blade is not a specific problem for us because it's not just woodblock printmakers that yeah. use them. So so that one, we're, we're lucky. Now, I've got to zoom out. I'll get rid of the disruption here in the corner. Move the camera over, maybe. Let's see. Is that going to show it? <coughs> Get rid of this. I need to be able to swirl the block around here now. At this point, it's now going to get a little bit noisy. <coughs> Excuse me. This won't be for too long. Okay. Turn your headphones down.
I'll need that, that, and that. <laughs> no, Cameron, turn them up. <laughs> <laughs> ASMR, are you ready? <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> there we go. Okay. Also, I've got to be careful. I do want to do this on a live stream. I've got the registration mark. So the last thing I want to do is cut those off, which uh, right. I would never, never, of course, never have <laughs> got. Here we go. Okay. Do you ever hit your thumb, they ask. We're here? Like, oh. When hitting? No. Hmm? Have, you, have you ever hit your thumb when hitting the chisel? I'm not sure what you mean. I don't... Just like smash it. I guess. No, no, I mean, I... Okay. Never hurt yourself doing it. That's all. I don't know if I use the word never, but yeah. recently, no. Recently, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I say be careful of the wire, we hear a smash and a crash <laughs> in the background. <laughs> no, he said, I told you, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see the chat stream while well, he's off taking that phone call. You're on your own, but uh, now I got to clear away a bit more of the wider stuff. This is the most noisy part. Sorry. Once this is over, we're back to the quiet work. Back on <laughs> one of the right notes before the last. Okay, that's stage two of this block. Stage one was the cutting with the outline knife. Stage two is the clearing with the wide chisels. And stage three now, we'll zoom back in a bit. Okay. Um. I think, yeah, someone said, I think Dave's used five tools so far in the making of this print. That sounds about right. Well, the cutting knife was one, all right. of that. Then I used... Uh, the sewing needle? I used two clearing chisels. I used a, a round modernomi, and then I used the big, f big flat one. So there's two clearing chisels. Hmm. And now for the last clearing step, I've got, I've got one, two, three, four, five of them on the desk here, and I may use all five of them back and forth, you know. There's a three millimeter, four millimeter, or one millimeter, you know, the sewing needle. Mm -hmm. So it's three types. So that's about it, you know. And um, we've talked about this before, you know, you don't need a whole bunch of specialized stuff, you know. Yeah. But on top of that whole thing is this particular craft, you know, is it's low tech, high touch. Mm. And it's okay. You know? And anybody who goes that way and thinks about they can't do this unless they have the special tools and stuff, you're not going to get anything done. So if you're going to make an error which way around here, I think it's better to, s to screw up my way, you know. At least this, I get stuff done. Yeah. All right, let's get this block finished, Dave. I think I'm actually talking a bit too much here. You know? We're, that's <laughs> done, that's done. <laughs> the chat the went silent. Done. 
<laughs> okay, okay, one side left here. This last little line. Okay. Someone jumped in and said, "Chat goes quiet when Sensei speaks as you were telling the story." Soka, the, what story? I forget. Oh, about the tools uh, and stuff. Yeah, and about yeah, your yeah. father. Soka, and Soka, Soka, yeah. The chat just totally stopped <laughs> for several minutes there. No one said anything. What do you mean, hanging on every word? Yeah, that's give, what me it like. give me a break. Give me a break. Give me a break. Okay, I think this block is finished. It didn't exactly take 90 minutes. Let me zoom out a little bit. What we've got here now is a finished first block, right? I've cleared enough around out the outside. We've got registration marks. We'll be able to print this in a few minutes. And I'm, what I'm going to do is, let me get this thing out of the way. We have a very simple job here. We've got some hair to carve, and I'm going to use for that the back side. Anybody who's expecting printing to start just right now, you got 10 more minutes to wait before we print. <laughs> I'm going to pop some registration marks in here. And this is another, people always say, how do you get the prints lined up? How do you get the registration marks lined up? It's automatic. I'm carving these in almost in a random place on this block. It doesn't matter where I carve them. Where's my persuader? Give me a tap here. Headphone watchers. There's a tap coming. Just a minute. Three, two, one. Splash of water. We're, done. We're over two hours now, all right? Oh boy, oh yep. boy, oh boy. Anyway, whatever, it doesn't matter. People can come, people can go. It'll all be later. I don't know what YouTube's yep. limit for length is. You know, we may have to edit this for YouTube. I don't know. What's it's the a limit? 10 hour length. 10 hours? Yep. So, we got eight hours left to finish this. Yeah, all right. I, I Let's, boogie. Let's boogie. Let's <laughs> boogie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. I've never noticed this. They uh, have the bot, um, if you send it, the term persuader, the name of your hammer. Oh, yeah, apparently. yeah, it's in there. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It says, hold on to your butt. <laughs> <laughs> and People then... think this is something I made up, but it's not. It's a generic mm. term. You know, mechanics yeah. talk about their persuader. They can't oh, yeah. open the nuts and bolts, so they get a wrench on and bring out their persuader. Yep. This is nothing that I created, you know. Yeah. Oh, it's funny. I think on the Twitch, on the Acolyte page, Acolyte page, ah! On the, on, <laughs> on the fan page a while ago, we had this photograph. Somebody was making this print. Right. And this is the image he used to explain what's going on as far as moops too far. I think he'd rubbed just this tiny fraction too far and boop, off oh. it had come. Oh, so right. back on that fan page, there is this very image you're seeing right now. The hair for this same image with a piece of gumpy and a finger rubbing and Oops, <laughs> so, and I'm going to stop just in time. Look at that. It's not going to get any blacker than that. We're okay. <laughs> if Dave planned on a 90 minute stream, I hope he also plans to live to be 100. <laughs> <laughs> it shows you how good I am at estimating these things, which is not at all very good. So, 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 so. I think I'll qualify that. Every time I said that, I said it might, 90 minutes, it might not be, so you know, we'll just do whatever it takes. So. Yeah. But yes, clearly. You know. Not a testament. I hope I made it clear that it wasn't going to be a race against the clock. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, around the last corner of this here, then we get the Mr. Persuader out again. <laughs> a few minutes from now, we'll be printing. This is that thing that uh, Hasui video we played the other day when Maida-san was at his bench. He didn't right. have a bench stop because he wasn't at his normal bench. So he was desperately trying to hold with his hand as he... Uh... Wow. Yeah. Trying to hold it in place while yeah. Yeah. chiseling I, I just, away. I was just uh, empathizing with the guy, you know. Yeah. 
come on, cameraman, give him a break, you know. Yeah. You're making him world famous. This is the thing that will define his life forever and ever after yeah. he's dead. And you're not letting him do his normal work at his normal bench, you know. Ow! Yeah. I felt hugely frustrated by that. Okay, I think here I am done carving stage one. We may have to touch some of this stuff up depending on what we see when we do test printing. Mm -hmm. But I think we are carved. Wow. We're going to take 90 minutes plus a few minutes, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just a few. And let me know when you need me to grab things. In one minute, let's get, get my okay. bench clear. Just one second. Just got to knock the edge off here so that when we're printing, it doesn't make a... Uh... Excuse me, when we print the hair, the baron tool will touch these. And if it's uh, too sharp, it'll leave a mark on the finished print. Mm. Okay, carving tools away. Now we're going to do this in a funny way. This is a carving bench, not a printing bench. It's angled the wrong way. It's all that, you know, we would never, never do printing in a bench like this, of course. But for what we're going to do here today, we'll get it done. Okay. Tools, sir. Bring yeah. me some tools. How are we going to do this? Thank you. We should probably zoom way out here just to get this thing sorted out first. Let's leave it there. Okay. Okay, now we gotta wash this. Someone said, do you mind zooming in the camera a bit? A bit more? Let's okay, yeah, yeah, fair enough, okay. Um, we'll zoom in enough, so what I also wanna do is when we get the so. pigment going on and stuff, I wanna see the, the, the show the tools and everything, so. so. Here's Aimee-san. Why was I mom? Careful of the cable, man. Mm. Aimee-san, good morning. We're, we're live. Be my life. Say hello. Say hello to the gang. So. This is Aimee-san and her baby she brought with her today. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Good. I think we should zoom out just a bit here because okay. you're going to see what's going on here. There's yeah. uh, paper is ready here. I've got a sheet of junk copy paper on top and tucked away inside is carefully moistened washi paper. This was moistened last night. I can't do all this totally on stream. I couldn't moisten it right now because it takes overnight to mm -hmm. settle down. But I didn't do anything magical. Just simply brushed water over the paper. And what we're now going to do, there's a baron here, there's paper here. I'll do some test splashes on this paper just to see what we got for pigment. I've brought from upstairs a, a bowl full of a kind of a teal pigment yeah. and another bowl full of green. It's not full, it's hopefully enough in there to do this. And I'm going to use those two to get close to what we see on the finished print here. Baron, block, paste pigments out of reach but you'll see them coming onto the tile. Get the block warmed up. Okay now here we go. We're gonna need some teal and I'm just guessing here how much green this is gonna be. I don't know. We'll see. Mix them together. Too much green, kind of. Okay, first jump, best impression I have. Has Dave taken a sip of his tea latte yet? <laughs> uh, a sip or two, that's all. It's gone cold there, sorry. I sacrificed myself for the stream there. Here we go. Okay, first impression. I think we're, are we close? 
I don't know, it's hard to say. I think we are close. What do you think, Dr. Cameron? <laughs> Dr. Cameron. There? I think it's a nice looking print. I'm holding it next to the, the one you have on the stream. Video. It's very similar. Two hundred and sixty three people are watching. Really? Wow. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Do they know what's going on? Because these can't all be regular viewers. Do we need to explain what's happening here? Yeah. I think they're right. I well they've been using the bot occasionally to kind of do a quick summary of what's happening. I think, but let's see. Well, let's take an impression here on Gosh and Baker. I called dibs on that test piece, the, the one on the printer paper. <laughs> it started already, has it? Yep. Are we going to need to sign these on air to make sure they're authorized copies <laughs> and stuff? Or what? The... Thank you, Kalaisa. And here's the first actual oh, wash. <laughs> See, it's all a funny light on it, but anyway, there's the first actual. So, should I quick click over the other window? Here's a second. Mm -hmm. I think we're looking right. I think we're looking okay. You know? I think this is looking good. We've got a little bit of tamari here, a little bit of paste building up in a couple of places. We might need to clean those out. Carve a bit deeper. We got a bit of a problem. There's a white streak here. See this? I don't know if you can see it. It's blocked. There's a hard spot on the block. Oh. We got a brand new block here. So that white streak is going to show up on a brand new block. Hmm. As we make impressions 10, 15, 20, 100, this starts to get softer and it gets, uh, they won't be so visible. But there's our first impression. Let me do a few more here. Okay, what we've got is one, two, three, four. Let me do one more five. So let's do the actual. Because I've got to get going in the black, you know. Yeah. We'll do five here on screen right now. Then I'll do five more this afternoon, you know, before I go home. The other five sheets that are in here, I'll do those five more. So we'll end up with ten today. Um... Huh. The first legendary loot print will be my first Dave Bull print. Any estimate on when it will be shipped out? They're getting shipped now, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, I think they're shipping as we speak, to show. Yeah, so they should be there very soon. Oh, I've got to mention one thing. It depends also on... Uh, we're running out of cases. In fact, we have run out yep. of cases. That's huh? what the phone call was this morning. Okay. Was. So, so we're out of cases. <laughs> yeah, so, so the... I want her to let me know which ones didn't get a case, and we will ship the case with the February print. So I want to let the people, um, you want to let the people yep. know in advance sure. that don't panic when you open it and there's no case inside. Well, yeah. you'll see it when you receive it. Right. And we're going to have to split them into two groups because what I've started doing the last few days, yeah. as I took in new subscriptions, people want a case. I didn't bill it to them because I know we have none right now. Ah, okay. So we've got two kinds now, people who have paid for a case, or three kinds. Yeah. People who have paid for a case and are getting one, people who have paid for a case and are not getting one. And then people who haven't paid for a case but want one. Okay. Okay, here we are. Let's go. There's there's five five of the background right there. Yeah. I'm keeping them in the pack so they stay moist. We've got to keep things moist. Yeah. I'm gonna take this stack now and I'm gonna flip it over so that number one is still now going to be number one the second time through. Right. Flip the block over, get rid of these pigments. The black, please, Kai son. Thank you. The first one might line up, might not line up. Who knows? Let's see. Yeah. Registration marks were there. So keeping it moist is a major concern. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Here we go. Here is print number one. 
Yes, yes, yes. Whoop, drop it, why don't you break it? And you can see, look at this, it's got a nice embossing under that body. Look at this, it's gonna be so cool. Look at that. Looks like the last print for this morning stream, right? We've got four. Yeah. That I haven't spoiled any yet. Look at this, you know? <laughs> so here we are, before the black goes on. Yes, everyone is asking, I don't need to send it another one today to get yourself entered. If you've sent a question any time in the past, your Yeah, name let's do it that way. Sure, 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 sure. Let's do it that way. In the system. There we go. And we got a number of this. This is number five. So this is the first five. I'll do five more at least this afternoon. We're going to put this down. And there we have it. Let's zoom in a bit. I think I'll use number four. I think the color. Is that it? Should we zoom in a bit more? That's nice. I think it looks very nice. I'm very, very, very happy with this. It's not like it's a very complicated print, but it's a beautiful clean design and it just suits the woodblock medium so beautifully, so perfectly, so perfectly. So there we go. We're going to sign off. Thanks very much for being part of this today. And uh, I've had a lot of fun making this and whatever. That's enough for today. This will be in the shop later once we've had time. Ayumi San's going to print it. Someone's going to print it. I don't know who. Cool. We'll have a go. Look at that. She looks so nice. Yeah. I just can't get it came enough. Came out great. Of this stuff. It's beautiful. And we've never even mentioned the designer's name once. Like we don't even care about him anymore. <laughs> I forgot. It's Ichiro or something. Oh no. <laughs> Whatever. He's happy. He's happy. Yeah. He's happy. Okay, people. Bye-bye. Thank you.